Hello and welcome back to my channel. Jacob Payton here and today I'm going to be talking about Larry Correa's Tower of Silence, which is the fourth book? Third? Fourth book? Fourth book. I feel confident saying fourth book. I know I should have double checked that um, in the saga of the Forgotten Warrior. And it says, War rages as the great extermination spreads. The assassination of the chief judge has pushed the capital to the edge. The great extermination has spread to all the land. The castless must be annihilated. Their only hope is the fallen protector, Ashok Vidal. But Vidal is being held prisoner on the island of Fortress. In order to save those who need him most, he must escape and find his way across the demon-infested sea and return to Thera, the prophet of an illegal and forgotten god. It is she who has sent the sons of the Black Sword to war against the warrior caste, hoping to buy time until Vidal's return. But as the chaos swirls, Grand Inquisitor Omen Vokan launches a coup to install Lord Protector Devides as his puppet king. Devides has no intention of being anyone's puppet, but it may not matter. For Vokan has struck a secret bargain with a demon, Vokan will destroy the castles for this ancient being. In exchange, he will be granted the power of the ancient gods. So we, yeah, that kind of gives away the, the beginning of the book. Um, yes, and it is the fourth book. I did double check. I do apologize for that. Uh, that kind of gives away the beginning a little bit because we do know that the chief and uh, the Lord Inquisitor, the High Inquisitor, the Chief Inquisitor, has made a deal with a demon. That is where they've been getting demon parts. We kind of knew that at that place called the farm that they had a demon trap that they harvested stuff from. What we were not aware of was kind of some of this backstory and the way that demons communicate and that the, that they can kind of do their own magic. Um, I found that super interesting. Uh, I definitely, you know, we, we spend a lot of time in this series dealing with like the politics and the stuff going on in all the cities and the, uh, the big houses and among the castless and then amongst the rebels, you know, the sons of the black sword. And so we're getting all this like the politics and the what's going on with the human faction that sometimes it's almost easy to forget the fact that there's like this race of de they call them demons but like otherworldly beings uh that are amphibious reptilian definitely aquatic that live in the ocean and want to like destroy mankind uh so i love the fact that the book kind of starts off just giving us more backstory into them and kind of showing us just enough, I think, to keep us hooked into more. I, I mean, it's Larry Korea. I mean, he's a master writer when it comes to this sort of stuff. To kind of, you know, he kind of teases, you know, it's one of those things, right? You kind of get teased to keep reading. Uh, do you want to learn learn more about this? Well, not yet. Um, but of course, I'm right there. I'm, I'm here for it. You know, I want to see where this series goes. I'm excited to see what's going to happen when... Asha kind of learns the truth of the demons and I because we know there's going to be some sort of final battle right there's going to be something that's going to be cataclysmic I mean we know that uh, the sons of the black sword they're all descendants of the warrior that destroyed them in the first first part the gods are making a return so whatever happens it's going to end in some apocalyptic cataclysmic battle uh, of course things are not as great because the grand extermination is underway um and it's sweeping across the cities we are seeing though i think really some of the first glimmer of humanity in a lot of the ruling cast because a lot of them are starting to be like hey wait a minute this is too much um of course it's not always for the reasons that you would almost hope it would be for that were like, hey, maybe we shouldn't exterminate all these other humans. Uh, mostly what's happening is the worker cast realizes that if all the castless are destroyed, that they're, they would essentially have to pick up the slack and do all the jobs that, you know, essentially this entire population of slaves does. I mean, that's what the castless are. The castless are owned like property. So, they would have to do all the jobs that they don't want to do. And the warriors, um, essentially, it's not great. 
but their whole thing is they're like we're this isn't something that's honorable to us and we don't like the idea of that this is what we're being used for because we should be fighting like house wars and stuff which is also happening we we do get told that um in there are houses that are taking advantage of this chaos especially after a chief judge is assassinated and there's there's like we're getting the first glimmers of infighting and what seems like is going to be a collapse around a lot of the quote-unquote law-abiding uh, houses that make up the ruling class that um, from the capital. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this. Ashok is not really... Um, he's in Fortress for most of this book, which I absolutely loved. I love learning more about Fortress. We know that Fortress kind of stayed loyal to the gods. Of course this led to a lot of gurus and a lot of like false prophets so to speak coming around and trying to take advantage of that loyalty so they do kind of try to put Ashok through a bunch of tests but there are people that believe he is who he says he is um and yeah there's a lot to fortress I don't want to spoil there is some secrets to fortress I absolutely love the learning about fortress though and the fact that um, even though it kind of makes sense because I guess reading some of the other books um, and you find out that Fortress has guns and everyone else is essentially fighting with swords, it's kind of like, well, why doesn't Fortress come and take everybody over? And then reading this, we find out very early on that it's because Fortress is essentially an island. And well, not only essentially, it is an island. But because of that, it has very limited resources. So it doesn't have enough guns and gunpowder to, you know, fight forever, right? It would need to claim some resources. Uh, and this becomes very clear early on um, when you find out some of the jobs on the island, like there's guilds in the same way that, I mean, it's obviously different, but the guilds are kind of almost like the cast back where Ashok's from and the way the guilds operate is there's like a salvagers guild right every guild obviously has a job but the fact that there is an entire guild that is completely devoted to picking through trash and stuff that washes on the beach kind of shows you you know what kind of society is on the island and what their resources look like um, and I really enjoyed that I mean once again we're getting an amazing amount of world building across this series and everything is very different um and every time i think i've kind of guessed what's going on i feel like i get a curveball right like I, I was thinking maybe thundar vibes at one point where it was you know maybe um I don't, I'm trying to describe Thundar the Barbarian, but it was kind of like post-apocalyptic sword and planet. So I was thinking maybe it was something like that, but there's something that happens in this book um, that is a bit of a spoiler when they are fighting a new subspecies of demons that had me kind of guessing, uh, second guessing myself on what I kind of thought was going on. And I will let you guys find that out for yourself. I'm not gonna spoil that for you, but I will say that we do get introduced to a different type of demon. I don't know if they're going to show up later on, um, or again, I hope not, because they were seemingly terrifying and seemed very hard to beat. But I would love to see you guys' reactions to that in the comments and kind of your speculation on what Ha, you know kind of what Thera unleashes and what that means or not Thera I'm sorry it wasn't Thera it was um our librarian friend whose name I can't remember who is betrothed to Devidis uh but and just kind of like what that means and what you guys think it means and we also find out a lot more about the black steel in this book which I thought was pretty cool we kind of learned some secrets of the black steel which I'm not going to spoil but it is way more than what it seems it's not just magical metal um yeah, it kind of goes beyond that. I I feel like this is really the shift and I maybe maybe last book too, but I think we're going to get a real big cosmic horror element out of this. Um 
because as someone that's read a lot of Larry Korea, I do know that he does enjoy cosmic horror, but also just the fact that it everything seems like it's maybe coming from space a little bit. Um, and I don't know what that's going to mean for the series. I don't know what that's going to mean for Ashok. I don't know what it's going to mean for the Sons of the Black Sword. Um, but it is going to be interesting to see, uh, especially seeing whether or not Omend is successful. Uh, because I, I'm going to say this right now. This is this is completely a guess. I don't have... I. I don't even know the title of the next book. I just know there probably will be a next book. I obviously don't get art copies or anything like that. So this is pure speculation. I think Omen isn't going to be successful in his grand extermination. I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to see major movement from the demons. I think Ashok is going to trigger something. Um... Or maybe Thera. It's going to be... I, I feel like Thera and Ashok kind of accidentally set stuff off, even if they don't mean to. Um, but I feel like somebody's going to set off something that's going to mobilize the demons before the Inquisitor can finish whatever his goal is. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be true. I just... I That's my gut feeling. If I had to guess, as someone that's read all four books, that is my guess. Uh, let me know if you guys think I'm wrong on that. I And I could be. I could be. I could be completely wrong. I do enjoy making wild guesses when I'm reading a series. I do the same thing when I'm watching TV shows. So people love it. Some people hate it. But I'm going to do it right here, right now. That's my guess. Um, I am here also. I'm going to say it right now. I'm here for the Demon War. I'm ready for it. I want to see. I cannot wait to read about it. Um... I feel like Ashuk is gonna just become something else. I also am enjoying reading about kind of the Sons of the Black Sword and the way that they're coming together and the fact that they are still the badass that they are and they are still decimating in the way that you want them to. Of course, like any rebel movement, there is betrayal and stuff within the ranks, but I'm not gonna spoil that for you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this book. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the world building. I enjoyed learning more about some of the bad guys' motives and also some of the house motives. I I feel like based on the politics and stuff that we've been given in previous books that the way things are starting to unravel is completely believable. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a society that's kind of built around might makes right in these like power grabs and now that there is a power vacuum everyone is trying to make their power grab so it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top and if they're going to be a you know a new adversary or are they going to be a new ally in what is essentially going to be what i think a cataclysmic event um yeah i also i'm going to say this right now I think Ashok with the gun is going to be terrifying. Um, while he doesn't seem too prone to use them currently, I think in later books we're going to see it. Uh, Larry Korea definitely likes um, protagonists with very big guns. And what we know of Ashok and the protector's strength, I think we could say right now he could probably carry a cannon. And I think that would be cool. Would it be ridiculous? Maybe. I don't know. I don't care because this is a fantasy book and that's why I read it. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I enjoyed this. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with the Sons of the Black Sword being fully armed. I can't wait to see what's going to happen now that Fortress has kind of been brought to the fold a little bit. Um, and that's not really a spoiler because we knew that was going to happen. There's a reason to send Ashik to Fortress. The how and why, I think, is going to blow some people's minds. Um, if you've been reading the series and you're a fan and maybe you're just like, I don't know if I want to keep reading it, go ahead and do it. Tower of Silence was really good. Um, you know, one of my pet peeves in a lot of books is when we've been giving a party for so long, then all the party splits up, and then we just kind of get all these fractured accounts. Usually I don't like that. I will say it was really good in this book because we got a lot of world building um, throughout. We also got a lot of build up to what is definitely going to be the next book. Um, 
And I think the next book is going to be, you know, that that's going to be action packed. I also feel like, I feel like it's going to be massive. I don't know. I feel like a lot's going to happen in the next book. Either way, I'm very excited for it. Um, you know, do yourself a favor, read the tower of silence. And if you haven't started it yet, go ahead and start reading the saga, the forgotten warrior. I mean, this is really good. Um, as someone that likes Larry Korea's books, I'm going to say this might be my favorite series by him currently. Um, even more so than monster, than the monster hunter universe, which originally got me into his writing. The only, yeah, I, I would say, um, cause I, I I've kind of fallen off of monster hunter stuff. Um, Mostly just because I couldn't keep up. There's a lot of spinoffs and stuff. I, I, I will probably get back into it at some point. But, man, I love this series. And I also love Servants of War. So, um, and I know that's not really relevant to this video. But if you do like Saga of the Forgotten Warrior, you should definitely check out Servants of War as well. Which is a series he's done. I think only the first book is out. He co-wrote that with, uh, I want to say Steve Diamond. But either way, it uh, it kind of like a World War One ask book with like mechs it's another fantasy it's kind of like fantasy science fiction mashup either way like the saga of the forgotten warrior it's very original and really really cool do yourself a favor read tower of silence i'm loving everything that's happening in the series still if you're a sword and sorcery fan or you're a uh, sword and science sword and planet science fictions and swords or whatever that mashup is called read this it's you're gonna enjoy this series uh don't start with tower of silence though start with son of the son of the black sword <laughs> don't start with the fourth book um but yeah i you know if you guys have been reading the series and you like it so far don't like it you know let me know in the comments below and as always if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time